listen to me. The world's coming after you. It's been a long time, friend. You've no idea the power I represent. The world is changing. Truth is vanishing. War is coming. In this thrilling cinematic adventure, we delve into the action-packed world of a top-secret operative. Join us as we unravel a complex web of espionage, high-stakes missions, and unexpected twists. Get ready for heart-pounding suspense and jaw-dropping stunts that will leave you on the edge of your seat. When the movie begins, the Sevastopol, a Russian submarine, is carrying a very deadly computer device underwater. A unique key that resembles a split cross is required to access the device. The submarine's crew sees what looks to be an enemy sub a nearby firing a torpedo at them. After firing their own torpedoes, they are startled to find that the other sub and their own torpedoes had vanished, seemingly out of existence. When the crew's own torpedo returns fire on the sub, it destroys it and kills every member of the crew. Elsewhere, under the pretense of delivering food, a rookie IMF agent pays Ethan Hunt played by Tom Cruise, a visit and presents him his fresh mission log. Ethan receives the task in an audio recording straight from Eugene Kittredge played by Henry Cherney, the director of the IMF, who tells him about the key and how it might be used for something disastrous. Additionally, Kittredge notes that Ilsa Faust played by Rebecca Ferguson, appears to have gone rogue. She has one half of the key, and has a $50 million bounty on her head. He adds that the mission involves someone from Ethan's past, the person who is the reason he joined the IMF. Ethan travels to Ilsa's hiding place in the Namibian desert. Before a bunch of mercenaries chase Ethan on horseback in the middle of a sandstorm, he lets her know that he is there. When the mercs track Ethan to Ilsa's hiding place, the two shoot each other until it looks like Ilsa has been shot to death. Kittredge meets with director Denlinger played by Carrie Elwes, who leads a group of intelligence chiefs known as the Community. They provide information on the entity, a computer device that has been engaged in multiple network infiltrations, including the Russian submarine. It is quickly becoming self-aware and sentient. They claim that since the entity cannot be eliminated, controlling it is their best option. As Kittredge mentions IMF, Ethan, in disguise, uses knockout gas to render everyone unconscious except Kittredge, giving him one of his own masks. Ethan is aware that Ilsa was the target of Kittredge's bounty, a flashback reveals that Ilsa is still alive and gives Ethan half of the key before escaping. Kittredge cautions Ethan that this situation he is about to find himself in is not like anything he has experienced before. Then, in order to escape the building, Ethan uses a mask that resembles Kittredge's face, and he shoots Kittredge with a tranquilizer dart. Ethan meets with Luther Stickle played by Ving Rhames and Benji Dunn played by Simon Pegg to talk about the entity and a strategy for finding the perpetrator. They discover that a buyer will be going for the key at an Abu Dhabi airport. Meanwhile, an agent with the community named Jasper Briggs played by Shea Wiggum and his partner Degas played by Greg Tarzan Davis are after Ethan. The IMF trio arrive at the airport for their mission. With help from Benji and Luther, Ethan is able to trick Jasper and Degas into going after the wrong guy by tampering with their video surveillance. Ethan ends up following a woman named Grace played by Haley Atwell, who has pickpocketed the other key half. He catches up to her and forces her to stick by him after they find that the buyer is dead, killed by a mysterious assassin known as Paris played by Palm Clementif. Benji notices a mysterious item going into the luggage department. Luther helps him track it down and find that it's a bomb, which activates and can only be disabled by solving riddles or answering personal questions, and it knows when Benji is lying. It even leaves a taunting message to Benji, you are done, his last name. When Benji is stuck on the last question, with seconds to go, he looks at the bottom and realizes the code is supposed to spell, good luck, and then he finds that it was empty all along. Ethan realizes that Gwen took the keys and tries to chase her but loses track of Grace after he spots a mysterious man known only as Gabriel played by Esai Morales, who then appears to vanish into thin air. Ethan tells Luther and Benji that they are terminating the mission. Jasper and Degas then find Ethan and chase him through the airport, but he manages to get away. Ethan tracks Grace to Rome, where she is apprehended by police with numerous fake passports and identities that are wanted all across the globe for numerous crimes of thievery. Ethan assumes the role of her attorney and discovers that Grace was employed by an unidentified third party to obtain the essential half. Paris and her men know that Grace is captured and try to get to her. Grace manages to get away from Ethan while he tries to sneak out. 
The two are later discovered by Paris, who hunts them down with the help of the authorities. Ethan and Grace are forced to seek out an IMF safe car during the ensuing chase around Rome, but Paris is still able to follow them. Grace eludes Ethan once more after a lengthy maneuver. Reunited with Benji, Luther, and Ilsa, Ethan talks to them about Gabriel and the entity. Gabriel had murdered Marie played by Mariella Garriga, a person close to Ethan, before Ethan joined the IMF. They plan to travel to a party Gabriel will be attending in Venice. Grace is discovered at the gathering by Gabriel, who then takes her to Alana Mitsopoulos aka White Widow played by Vanessa Kirby. Aware that Alana has the other half of the key and was the one who hired Grace to look for the other half, Ethan and Ilsa discover them as well. Gabriel praises the entity, noting that Alana is aware of the reason they must bring the entity's key. The entity appears to be omniscient and is aware of many possible outcomes. Gabriel predicts that before the key is delivered, either Grace or Ilsa will pass away. Alana refuses to change her mind despite Ethan's efforts to persuade her otherwise. Grace breaks away from the team and escapes through the streets before being caught up by Gabriel beside the canal. Ethan starts to rush in her direction, but the entity impersonates Benji to divert him. Paris finds him, engages in combat with him, and loses, but Ethan decides to spare her life. As Gabriel is about to kill Grace Ilsa arrives, she engages Gabriel in combat, which leads to Gabriel fatally stabbing Ilsa. Ethan is too late as Ilsa is gone. Grace joins Ethan, Benji, and Luther as she feels remorse for Ilsa's death, but Luther assures her that she is not to blame. Ethan makes a promise to protect Grace while Luther heads to an off-grid location to break down traces of the entity on his hard drive. He also tells Ethan not to kill Gabriel because he's the only one who knows what the entity needs the key for. The new plan is to tail Alana as she is set to meet with a buyer for the key on the Orient Express. Benji makes a mask for Grace to pose as Alana, but when he tries to make a mask for Ethan to pose as her brother, the mask machine malfunctions, forcing Ethan to come up with a new plan to board the train. On the train, Gabriel and Paris board and kill the conductor, causing the train to go at its maximum speed. Ethan rides a motorcycle and tries to find a good position to jump on. Grace incapacitates Alana and poses as her. Meanwhile, Paris encounters Denlinger, who hopes to align himself with the entity. He talks about the Sevastopol, which was testing its stealth capabilities using the entity's network, but instead took control and tricked the sub into blowing itself up. When Denlinger says he knows where the sub is located, Gabriel slashes his throat and then prepares to kill Paris, saying that she will betray him. He stabs her and flees. Ethan is unable to use his motorcycle to board the train, so he must carefully time his parachute drop and jump from a cliff. Grace then encounters Kittredge, who turns out to be the buyer of the key. She considers accepting the amount but decides against it since she feels like she is selling her soul. She steals the key, but as soon as the real Alana awakens, her cover is broken. Grace is attempted to be pursued by Alana's men, but Ethan breaks through the window in time. Ethan goes after Gabriel, while Jasper and Degas are also on the train and go after him. Grace heads to the front to try and stop the train from going further. After a long fight, Jasper and Degas corner Ethan before he can kill Gabriel, allowing him to jump off the train. Gabriel then sets a timer for bombs to blow up the incoming bridge. Ethan and Grace unhook the front car while the agents try to get everyone on board to safety. The bridge blows up, and Ethan and Grace have to climb through multiple falling cars. Just before they fall, they are saved by Paris. Just before she loses consciousness, she mentions the Sevastopol and wishes Ethan good luck. Ethan then escapes on a parachute before Jasper and Degas can arrest him. Grace then finds Kittredge and says she wants to join the IMF. Gabriel appears content in his victory until he realizes Ethan switched the key he took from Grace with a lighter, causing him to scream Ethan's name in rage. Ethan reunites with Benji, now in possession of the key. Kittredge's voice is then heard addressing Ethan, as his next mission now involves finding the Sevastopol and saving the world. He also wishes Ethan good luck. Intrigued by the world of espionage and jaw-dropping stunts in Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1? Share your thoughts in the comments below. What was your favorite action scene? Who's your favorite character? And, most importantly, what do you think will happen in the next installment? Let's keep the mission alive in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more thrilling movie insights on our channel.